Hey, what's up, guys? Hard Lake Joe here, coming at you with the What a Dick Profile for episode 170, Orcus Control. For our monster lineup, we have three World Legacy, Dash World Wand, three World Crown, three Dark Greffer, three Orcrist Harp Horror, three Armageddon Knight, three Orcrist Symbol Skeleton, two TG Warwolf, and three Orcrist Brass Bombard. For our spells, we have three Allure of Darkness, three Orchestrated Return, two Twin Twister, two World Legacy Succession, and one each of Reinforcements of the Army, Foolish Burial, Monster Reborn, Orchestrated Einsatz, and Orchestrated Babel are only traps, one copy each of Orchestrated Attack, and Orchestrated Core. For Extra Deck, we're playing two each of all the Orcus Link monsters, that's two Galatea, two Longearsu, and two Orchestrian. We're also playing one each of Topological Bomber Dragon, Topological Gumblar Dragon, Topological Trisbania, Boral Load, Boral Sword, Decode Talker, We Witch's Apprentice, Underclock Taker, and Link Karibo. The side deck I'll go over in a little bit. So this is a fairly standard Orcus deck designed to do all the things that Orcus do, mainly summon big old Link monsters. To accomplish this, there are three Orcrist main deck monsters, which all have similar effects. Basically, if they are in the graveyard, you can banish them to summon an Orcrist monster with a different name from somewhere. All these effects are hard once per turn, and if you use them, you can't summon anything but dark monsters for the rest of the turn. As for where the monsters summon from, Harp you can banish to get an Orcrist from the deck, Skeleton Man summons one from the graveyard, and our little Doot Doot Horn summons one from your hand. Using these three in specific combinations, you can Link Climb with relative ease. There are three Orcus Link monsters, like I said, a Link 2, a Link 3, and a Link 4, which can all be made with two or more effect monsters, including at least one Orcrist monster. So just to run through a very basic combo, let's say you have Brass Bombard and Horror Harp in your starting hand. You Normal Summon Brass, send it to the graveyard for Link Karibo, and now that it's in the grave, you can banish it to Special Summon Harp from your hand. This and Link Karibo, that'll be the two monsters you need to make your Link 2. Link Summoning will of course put Harp into the graveyard, so you can banish it to summon Skeleton from the deck. Skeleton plus your Link 2 makes your Link 3 and puts Skeleton in the graveyard. From there you can banish Skeleton, summon back your Link 2, and combine it with your Link 3 to make your Link 4. As for what these Link monsters actually do, they each have two effects. First, they all have continuous effects, that turn on when they're linked to another monster. And just for clarification, linked means either that they point to a monster, or that a link monster points to them. Either one works. Your link 2, Galatea, can't be destroyed by battle if it's linked. Longearsu can't be destroyed by card effects when it's linked, and your big boss monster, Orcustrian, combines the two, so it can't be destroyed by battle or card effects while it's linked. In addition, these all have ignition effects that you can activate by shuffling banished machine monsters back into the deck. Galatea can shuffle one back to set an Orcrist spell trap from your deck. Longearsu can shuffle two back to send a linked monster your opponent controls to the graveyard. And Orcustrian can shuffle three back to permanently negate the effects of all linked monsters your opponent controls and turn their attack and defense to zero. All the Orcus main deck monsters are machines that banish themselves from the grave, so getting the prerequisites for these effects is not too difficult, and the effects themselves, especially these last two, are really effective because they don't target, and all of your Orcus link monsters have arrows that point upwards to your opponent's monster zone, so you can affect them that way. The only downside to these effects is that none of them are quick effects, so they can't be used to disrupt your opponent during their turn. Fortunately, this is addressed by the field spell, Orchestrated Babble, which makes all your Orchrist effects into quick effects. We only play this at one because it's searchable with Galatea, and it's recoverable. It has a second effect that you can send a card from your hand to the graveyard to add it back to your hand. So generally, the plan is to go first, build a big old Link monster, and then get Babble along the way so that you can activate effects during your opponent's turn and disrupt them. The only problem is, unless you get a very good starting hand, you're not going to be able to search Babel and end with the three monsters banished that you need to activate Orcustrian's effect. That's why most of the time, we make Topological Bomber Dragon instead. This is a dark Link 4 monster that only requires two or more effect monsters, so it can be made with all the same combos that would make Orcustrian. It has the same 3k attack, but a much more powerful effect. 
If monsters are special summoned to a zone a Link monster points to, destroy all monsters in the main monster zones. This is not once per turn, and it can be triggered really easily by your Orcrist monsters. Since Babel makes their banish effects into quick effects, you can just end with Harp or Skeleton in the grave, and then when your opponent tries to make a board during their turn, you can summon something to one of the arrows that Topological points to, and it'll nuke the board. If you use Harp, you can summon a Skeleton from the deck. It'll get destroyed, but that just means you have a Skeleton in the graveyard you can now use. You can use this to summon your Link 3 or your Link 4 back, most likely your Link 3, and they'll survive the field wipe because they can't be destroyed by card effects while they're linked. This will allow you to start your next turn with 5,500 damage on board, and if you arrange the monsters correctly, you can make it so that your Orcrus link points to the other extra monster zone. So even if your opponent manages to avoid the destruction and make something, you can negate its effects or just send it to the graveyard. A furthermore, Topological Bomber packs additional damage with its second effect that says, if it attacks a monster after damage calculation, inflict damage to your opponent equal to that monster's attack. So these are your two main win conditions, but how do you get them? I mentioned that combo, which used the two specific Orcrist monsters and Link Karibo, but really you can do the same thing by getting any monster on the field and putting Harp into the graveyard. That's why we play Armageddon Knight and Dark Greffer. Uh, Armageddon Knight, when it's summoned, will send one dark monster from your deck to the graveyard. And Greffer, you can discard a dark monster to send a dark monster from the deck to the graveyard. Both of these will get Harp in the grave while they're on the field, which will start your combo with one or two cards, respectively, allowing you to use the rest of your hand for whatever you'd like. In my build, I leaned into the Link Summoning aspect by adding a bunch of extenders to the deck, allowing me to use those extra cards to hopefully put additional Links on board. World Legacy Big Stick has two effects. First, if it's in the graveyard, you can banish it to summon one of your banished Orcrist monsters, making it effectively a fourth Orcrist resource. Uh, second, if it's sent to the graveyard, you can special summon a World Legacy monster from your hand meaning if you discard it with Dark Greffer or any of your other discard cards, you can summon a second copy of itself from your hand, or a copy of World Legacy Crown. Crown, in addition to getting summoned by Wand, can special summon it in defense to any zone that a Link monster points to. From there, you can either just use it as free Link material, or keep it on board for its negate effect. During either player's turn, if a monster summoned from the extra deck activates its effect, you can tribute Crown to negate that effect and destroy the monster. Our last remaining main deck monster is TG Warwolf, which is just a dark monster that you can special summon from your hand when a level 4 or lower monster is special summoned to either side of the field. This is mostly used as link material since you're undoubtedly going to be summoning level 4 or lower Orcrus during your turn, but it can also be used to trigger Topological Bomber Dragon during your opponent's turn if they summon a low level monster. As for our spells, we're playing two different kinds of draw power, Allure of Darkness, draw two, banish one dark monster, which works really well in this deck since most of our monsters are once per turn, meaning you can get rid of duplicates, and all of your banished machines just become additional resources you can use for your links. Our other card, Orchestrated Return, lets you send one Orchrist or World Legacy monster from your hand or field to the graveyard to draw two cards. This is a really good play starter if you happen to have Harp in your hand, since you can discard it and draw two more cards. But even if you don't, it's just a nice extender in general. All your Orcrist will have effects in the graveyard, and you can even trigger World Wand with it. After that, we have a bunch of one-ofs. Rhoda searches Armageddon Knight and Dark Greffer. Foolish Burial sends Harp to the graveyard. And Monster Reborn extends your plays by letting you reuse Link material. Everything else in here is just a tech card, which can be switched out at your leisure with stuff in the side deck, or just replace all together depending on how the meta shifts. Uh, going with the theme of extending summons, I play two World Legacy Succession, which essentially serve as extra copies of Monster Reborn. For Spell Trap removal, I went with two copies of Twin Twisters, which has excellent synergy since you want to discard all your monsters to the graveyard. Our remaining cards are just a bunch of one-off Orcrist support, which can all be searched with Galatea if need be. Einstotz is a continuous spell that says once per turn, if your opponent normal or special summons a monster, take an Orcrist or a World Legacy monster from your deck and either banish it or send it to the graveyard. This can be really good for giving the deck much needed resources, but it relies on your opponent summoning something, so it's usually useless first turn. I tend to search it if the game turns grindy to ensure that I have a constant stream of Orcrists hitting the graveyard. 
Babel, I already explained. Orchestrated attack is a nice bit of spot removal when any monster declares an attack. You can tribute an Orchest or World Legacy, target an opponent's monster, and banish it. Since you can activate this when either player's monster attacks, this can be used defensively or offensively, and all your Orchrists either get effects in the grave, or can be summoned back out of the grave with skeletons, so the cost isn't that big of a deal. Finally, we have Orchestrated Core, which is a continuous trap with two effects. First, once per turn, you can banish a monster from your field or graveyard to target a World Legacy or Orchrist and make it untargetable for the rest of the turn. Second, if an Orchrist or World Legacy would be destroyed, you can send this to the graveyard instead. This can be a nice search, like turn 2, turn 3, to defend your monsters, if you know your opponent is going to try to target them to get rid of them. In the case of Orcustrian, targeting is pretty much the only thing it's vulnerable to, so getting this to protect it can help a lot. Of course, both of these are only useful in niche situations and only against certain decks, which is again why we just play them at one, and then we put extra copies in the side deck. So if you find that one is particularly useful, you can add in a second copy, take out the one that you don't like as much. Uh, speaking of the side deck, aside from the traps and an extra copy of Twin Twisters, most of it is just cheesy options for making Orcrist more trollsy. Card Destruction and Soul Charge, both just really powerful one ofs in some instances, they can win you the game on their own by just giving you so many resources. I generally don't include those because I want to show what the deck can do. But you know, if you want to get those cheesy wins from time to time where you just draw luckily, put those right in there. Uh, likewise, Super Poly, another strong one of, just a nice bit of removal that you can use to make Starving Venom if your opponent happens to be playing Dark Monsters as well. Uh, if you want to go with Synchros, both Destrudo and Black Salvo are Dark Tuners that can double as Link Material or Synchro Material, depending on what you want to do. Lightning Vortex can be a fun little bit of removal, or can bait out negations, if you're building a Go Second OTK version of this, or just if you're going second in general. It allows you to discard your Orcrus to blow up the field. It can be really good to swap this out, maybe for the Twin Twisters, if you're going against a monster-heavy deck that swarms a lot, something like Light Swarms or Burning Abyss. Finally, there's just Desperado Barrel Dragon, which is a Trollsy 2800 beat stick with a coin flip destruction effect, which can be summoned from your hand if a face-up Dark Machine is destroyed by battle or card effects. I never tested with this, but in a deck of mostly Dark Machines, it seems like it would be a fun surprise to drop on your opponent when they destroy one of your monsters. Anyway, there's the deck. I hope you enjoyed. If you'd like to see Orcus Control in action, you can check out the main video. There I'll be playing 10 duels against random opponents on YGO Pro, showing off how this thing works. Or if you're short on time, just check out the replay video. Both should be on the end card and linked down in the description. Anyway, until next time, good luck and have fun. <laughs>